Good morning everyone, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com. Today we've got a very interesting episode. For a number of years now we've been looking for a cost-effective solution to teach people PLC programming around the world. Now we've explored different solutions, but as you know from my experience, I've been primarily focused on Alan Bradley. Now, a lot of you have seen the wall behind me and have recommended to look at Siemens, to look at Opto 22, PLC Next, Omron, Mitsubishi. All of you have experiences in different parts of the world. That being said, it's not until today that we've decided to evaluate certain starter kits and see which platform is going to make a lot of sense for us to cover going forward. So what I've got here on the table right now is a Siemens starter package, which you can actually order yourself if you want to follow along. But we're going to be doing a bunch of episodes on Siemens. We're going to start with the software getting everything ready on our computers and then we're going to go through the functions the programming the setup the hardware so it's going to be very interesting i'm really excited for siemens because i know it's a very dominant uh, plc brand especially in europe and it's been gaining a lot of traction in north america as well so this starter kit is going to contain a, an s7 1200 series plc that being said we're going to discuss some of the other functions or other plcs available in that same catalog without any further delay let's open the box and see what's inside all right so let's see what we've got inside of the crate i'm just going to rotate the slatch and open up the lid so we've got a few very obvious things. We've got a nice little screwdriver that advertises the Siemens logo, which is another brand of the Siemens PLCs. Next, we've got an Ethernet cable. So just a simple RJ45 connector cable. We're going to put all the components outside out of the box, and then we're going to look at them and unbox them separately. We've got one of the Siemens modules, so Sematic S7-1200 series, as I had mentioned. The camera is not focusing on that really well. We've got another module. And once again, I'm going to link to uh, to this specific box. So that was the CPU. This is the digital input module, as you can see by the label. We've got a, another module, which this one is going to be a digital output module. So we'll, we're going to connect those in just a moment. And then we've got some software licenses. So what's really interesting about Siemens is that they provide you with the software as part of the starter kit and then you can use that for TIA portal. All right, so we've got the three modules on the desk. Let's start with the CPU module so I can simply break the seal by using a flat head screwdriver. Of course, a knife would be more adequate for this application. There we go, struggling just a little bit with the box. You've got a small DVD. I'm not sure. Um, so that's the documentation for the PLC. Probably not going to look at that. You can download that anyways. Uh, so Siemens CPU. So it is the DC DC uh, relay. So DC input, DC output, and relay output, I'm assuming. But um, here's the specific part number in case you're curious and want to purchase one that is separate from the starter kit. Next, we've got the digital output module. So likewise, we can break the seal of the module, struggle a little bit with the box. We've got a little pamphlet as well, and here's the output module. Looks just as you would expect. So once again, if you're interested in the specific part number that you get in this kit, here it is. And then last but not least, the digital input module. So similarly, we can break the seal, all the boxes, and we've got the three modules. It's interesting, I'm not sure what this, uh, I guess the slatch is to push out the connector that's going to be connected to the next module. So here we've got the CPU, the Sematic S7-1200 series. Based on what I can see on the right-hand side, looking down at the CPU, this is going to be the the little door um, in which we're going to find the connector. So what we can do is we can put in the input module, obviously next to the PLC, and then we can slide down this little notch. Or I guess we can slide down. We can slide down the notch first and then make the connection between the two uh, modules. So there we are, the two modules are connected. 
Um, I would probably do this on a din rail uh, next time. I do have a couple of them available behind me. And so we're going to connect that as well. I forgot to remove the side panel from here. So there's going to be another side panel on each one of the modules. Uh, it's very thoughtful. I'm guessing it's to prevent any dust from going into it while it's being transported or installed. So we've got the output as well. We can move this aside and we've got a full system to practice on. So the next step is going to be to install the software that we received in this package as well and then see if we can go online with this PLC. We do have an Ethernet port that's going to be located right here. So we're going to install the RJ45 cable as well and put it on the home network that I've got set up here. Before we move on to the software piece of the uh, of the video, we do need to install the power on our controller. And you'll notice that I've got the 24 volts DC run right above and I've got two wires. My entire system is powered down. I highly recommend that you do not wire anything while the system is live. That being said, where we need to land these two wires are going to be on the left most terminals if looking from the front of the PLC. So on the second leftmost terminal, we're going to find the ground for the 24 VDC signal. I'm just going to secure that with the screwdriver that I've received in the kit. So there we have 24 volts DC or zero DC since it's the ground. And here we've got the brown wire, which is traditionally representative of the 24 VDC plus. So likewise, I'm going to secure that on the terminal i'm going to post a picture of the end result just so you know where to land those cables exactly but we can close off this little latch here put the plc back into base condition and the last thing that we're going to do on the hardware side is going to be to connect the ethernet cable so as discussed we were provided with an ethernet cable that's going to come in right under the PLC like so and to make it easier you can obviously open the latch all right so it looks like the PLC is going through a boot sequence um, obviously I am not familiar with the lights that should be coming on and off but I'm assuming that it's doing some basic checks and we should be able to get some kind of a green light maybe at the end our IO module on the right hand side has not been configured. So I am assuming maybe some kind of a red light. So that's going to probably stay until we configure the module. As we saw in the unboxing sequence, the TF portal version 16 software was delivered on a DVD with the kit. I had no specific issues installing the software. Therefore, I decided to skip the process. All I had to do was insert the DVD and then follow the prompts to install the software. Now, one thing I do want to point out is after you finish the installation, you will get a shortcut to this automation license manager. And this is important because the license is going to come in on a USB license key. And so here what you'll see is that I've got the license already set up on my C drive. That being said, it is first delivered on the license key. And what's interesting, and I guess a little bit unusual to me, is that you can transfer the license to the USB key and then back on the C drive. And I'm assuming they've done so because you can essentially pass this license along to somebody else, either immediately or down the road. But what you can do is you can transfer the license back on the license key it goes back on the usb key like i said you can move the usb key to a different computer and then use the license there so an important step of the installation process is going to be to navigate first of all to this automation license manager go into license key which is going to be your usb with the license once again delivered to you with the kit and then you need to transfer to your local disk C in order to be able to use that in TIA Portal version 16. And so the next step for us is going to be to launch TIA Portal version 16 in order to create a first version of a program and connect with the PLC. So I'm going to double click the shortcut that has been installed on my desktop and TIA version 16 will launch within a few moments. As you can tell, I've already tried to create a few projects for experimentation, but let's create a new project for demonstration purposes. I'm going to navigate into this create new project section, 
going to give this a name. So this is going to be Solus PLC underscore demo project. We're going to save it there. That's fine. We're going to click on create. We're going to have to choose the hardware that we want to configure for the project. So I'm going to click on this configure a device button. So we're going to select controllers and from the S7 1200 series CPU, we're going to have to find the specific model that we have been installing. So this is going to be the CPU 1212 FC DC DC relay. And once again, if you're confused by where this number is coming from, it's going to be listed on the front cover as well as on the side cover of the actual PLC. So I'm going to expand this section and sometimes you're going to have different flavors. That being said, in our case, there's going to be only one. So I'm going to select that specific model of hardware and press add. From the next menu, we need to configure the Ethernet IP address of our PLC in order to be able to go online, just like we do with any other brand of PLCs. That being said, Siemens has a tool which allows you to browse for accessible devices. So if you're unsure of the initial IP address, because I've already set mine to match one on my private network, but here you can browse for all available devices. And in my case, I'm going to select this PNI interface, and you can press on search, which will allow you to browse all the available devices on that specific subnet. Now, because I'm using a virtual machine, it's possible that it's not going to find the specific uh, device that I have installed on my network. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to type in the network address directly on the PLC um, in the software, and then try to attempt to connect through a different method. So what I'm going to navigate into is first of all, I'm going to select the CPU, as you can see here, then I'm going to navigate to the Profinet interface and then Ethernet addresses. And here we're going to give it a non default. So the default is 192.168.0.1. We're going to set this to 1.90, which is the address that I have given it a few days ago. So we're going to attempt that. And once you type in the new IP address, you'll notice that the go online button will become available. So I can press on this go online button, go online. And then from here, we can once again, browse to that specific IP address. So let's try that again. So IE, let's see here if we search, it's going to, as it says here in the status bar, attempt to establish a connection. And this should work because as I said, I've already set the IP address of my specific PLC and that's not browsing the entire network. So it should be able to find the PLC. And so it looks like we found the right IP address for the device and the target device names with the right IP address. So I can press on this go online button and hopefully the software will allow us to connect to this PLC. And it seems that everything is okay. We do have a few errors, which we will correct in the next lectures. That being said, the orange status bar, as well as the button that tells us to go offline indicates that we are now connected to the PLC. There's also a few check marks that tell me that the PLC is okay. And we are live with the system. Thank you everyone for watching. There's going to be links in the description. If you ever want to follow along and purchase the same kit that I'm using for these videos. And I'll see everybody next time.